Okay, today we're talking about food webs and how they are important. Uh, our handout asks us what's the main difference between a food chain and a food web. And what I answer is that it's the diversity of possible pathways that exist in a food web to complete the circle of life. And to illustrate, suppose we have a food chain. Say, animal A feeds animal B, which feeds animal C, which feeds animal D, and then when animal D dies, and I think the picture we have is where you have a grasshopper, then a frog, the frog gets eaten by a snake, the snake gets eaten by an eagle. When the eagle dies, it, uh, it decomposes and it ends up feeding the grass that was feeding the grasshopper. So the cycle is completed. But in a food web, you have multiple pathways. So for example, the grasshopper might not only be eaten by a frog, it might also be eaten by a mouse. So let's say B1 is a different predator for the, for the grasshopper. So that way, even if the, all the frogs die off, the grasshopper still has a predator. And the effect is that with, with the, when you have more pathways open at each level, then it creates the possibility where the, where the circle of life is maintained. If you were to cut out all the predators in one, in one area, in the food chain, the food chain would break down because the, uh, the snake is not going to eat grass. And that's why when you have biodiversity, Biodiversity is, is one of the ways of preserving the, uh, the circle of life because the, when you have food chains intertwined, it creates multiple pathways. The first question is, what product in photosynthesis is used to fuel cellular respiration? Now, photosynthesis produces glucose and oxygen. You see from this chemical equation that carbon dioxide and water are used by trees to produce glucose, and the trees use uh, a form of oxygen as a byproduct. Now, the glucose is, can be combined in several different ways. You can form starch, as, like you see in potatoes or in unripe bananas. You can form cellu cellulose, which is, used, uh, which is found in celery. Now, celery, if you, if you chew on it, if a human being chews on uh, cellulose, they get no uh, nutritive value out of it because we don't have the enzymes to digest it. But an animal like a horse or a zebra or any animal with a large belly, a belly called a ruminant is able to digest the cellulose and break it down into, its, into glucose again. So they can get nutrition out of it. But human beings can't digest cellulose. So we eat it and it's crunchy but it doesn't give us any uh, nutritive value. And you can get other simple sugars from fruits. Most fruits that are sweet to the taste will have simple sugars that are made of glucose as a building block. Second question was, why do consumers further along the food chain receive less and less energy? And the answer to that is that at each trophic level, only a small amount of the energy, about 10%, is transferred from the previous trophic level. So if out of, say, 100 pounds of grass, you'll get about 10 pounds of grasshopper. And out of about 10, 10 pounds of grasshopper, you'll get maybe one pound of frog, as it were. Uh, according to that idea. So to grow large animals like a cow or, a, or a, a horse requires a lot of fodder, a lot of grass, because the animal has to turn a lot of that low energy food into, into meat, and that takes a lot of biochemical energy. So this is the idea behind trophic levels and the fact that the energy transfer is relatively inefficient. Okay, we'll leave it there. Okay,